How's it going, YouTube? It is Nate, your buddy, here at Geo Aquariums. And today, I'm going to offer you the experience to walk into my high tech testing laboratory and take a look at how I make DIY PVC overflows. Check this out. You crazy mother. All right, so here's just a little sneak peek at what we're building. So I got it coming straight out of the faucet there, running at a pretty good pace, and this little guy is keeping up with this thing, no problem. So come with me back here to the workshop, and we are going to get started. All right, so real quick, let's just take a little peek at what we're gonna need here. So I have half inch C PVC. All right, so it's smaller than the usual PVC stuff you use. I'm using three quarter inch, uh, schedule 40 I believe this is. This is a thin wall PVC. You are going to need, for one, you will need two CPVC CB, half inch elbows. We are going to need two three quarter inch PVC end caps. You're going to need a slip to thread um, from three quarter inch down to half inch thread. PVC. And then here we have a threaded 90 degree barbed connector. You're going to need three three quarter inch PVC tees. And I believe that is what you're going to need for materials. Things that are going to help you out. PVC cutters. I would never cut PVC any other way. If you use a saw, I'm telling you it's worth the 10 bucks. These things are awesome. I have two different drills. Yeah. So one, I have a small drill that I used to make as a pilot hole. And then a much larger size, which right now I'm actually using 7 30 seconds. And then now, let's see here, you're going to want some glue. There's a few things you're going to want to glue up. Um, note that CPVC uses a separate glue than regular PVC does. However, they can both use, be used, uh, use the same purple primer here. It will be labeled on the jars, but it's just something worth noting. Um, I believe that's it. So, as long as there's no questions, let's get started. All right, so let's rip through this here. So for my 10 gallon and my 20 gallon high, I've been making them like this. So I make, cut my first piece at seven inches. Boom. Cut my second piece here on this three quarter inch PVC at six inches. bridge them together. I don't know exactly how long this is. I use about two fingernail widths, which is probably close to a half inch each. I'm going to cut about an inch, inch and a quarter piece here. Doing this live. Alright, so that's all we're going to need off of that real quick. So then we're just going to throw these together. So you can take your two T's using your top pieces I guess, All right? Push those together, I like them when there's no gap. Okay, so now you're gonna take, you have a six inch and a seven inch, All right? We're gonna take our seven inch, put it on one end, and then immediately take your end cap and cap it off. I like to use my body weight on the ground, get a good seal, because I'm not gonna be gluing this, these actual pieces here. Now we're gonna take our six inch piece, fill that on the other side. I use about a thumb width. However, 
So that way you got an actual reference. We're looking at around two to two and a quarter inches. So we're gonna take about a thumb's width and you're gonna cut it. I didn't have it in there all the way. I've never had that happen before. But we're on camera, so things are going to happen. Alright, so now we got this T here we're going to throw on. I like to turn it out because this is where your, basically where your drain is going to be. I'm trying to get this all lined up. So if this ends going to be in the tank, having the drain turned out, it gives you extra, uh, less clearance that you need between your tank and the wall, if that makes sense. So once we got there, we're going to take that little piece that we cut off our six inch piece earlier, throw that in the bottom, end cap, then again, go down to the floor, give this one a good push. Once they're fully sealed together, they're about the same length. You see that? Very, very close to being exactly the same length. Once we're there, we're gonna use another inch, inch and a quarter-ish piece because we gotta make another connector. Like I said, I use about two fingernails because once you start trying to just speed along and get things done super quick, you just come up with weird methods, you know what I mean? All right, so now that new inch, inch and a quarter piece, slipping in there, our slip to thread, our barbed threaded 90 degree, Screw this on here. Boom. Spin that straight down. All right, so now we have this U shape here, right? So the side that doesn't have the fitting, obviously gonna be the side that's in the tank. So you need to drill a hole at where you want your, your water level. So I know I like my water level probably slightly higher than other people. So I put a hole about a quarter inch from the bottom of the teeth. Boom, there's a hole. I like to do three. There's a hole. There's a hole. So I got my pilot holes. Now we're gonna drill these quite a bit bigger, 730 seconds. Um, and this is where the water is actually overflowing into. So you're gonna want to make sure you have a good flow right here. So there's one. Two, and three. Go ahead and clear your pipe out. All right, so now this part's all set to go. So now we, what we need is we need basically the siphon portion of this, right? So how I do this, I don't use a measurement. I just stick it all the way down to the bottom. I take my finger, I mark it, and then take my PVC cutters. This is that half inch CPVC and I go about a quarter inch below my thumb. All right, so I'm gonna put that back in there. You can see that it's sitting just below the lip. I believe that was the right side. Same side I did the first time. Okay, that's the right side. So we're just a, about a quarter inch below the lip, you can see there. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing now for the opposite side. Go this all the way and make sure you get all the way down to the bottom and we'll get hung up on that T. Again, about a quarter inch below the thumb. Boom. Now each one of those will fit inside of there. We'll pull these back out a little bit. Try to keep them organized so you know which hole goes to which. We're throwing on our elbows. Boom. Elbow here. Boom. So now this is what our product looks like. I then will take my PVC, hold it up. It's probably gonna go about a quarter inch into each one. Mark it with your finger. Also, this blade is super sharp, so if you do it the way that I do it, careful not to use your finger. Something tells me you wanna have a finger if you really cinch down on her. But, boom. So once that's pushed together, you get this concept here. And honestly, now we're done. That's literally the whole project. So live speed, that took nine minutes, okay? Something you can do as added safety, pull this out, 
I don't believe it's completely necessary because we were a quarter inch below those holes, but something to be extra safe. Cut little notches out of the ends here so that way they don't seal off on the bottom and you don't lose your siphon. All right, so we got our little quarter inch cuts. Boom, that is done. Just like that. That's all it takes. You saw it live, you saw it working in action. I hope this helps you. Thanks for watching. All right, y'all. So I was just trying to rip through that. I tried to see how fast I can make it on camera for you guys. Um, a little tidbit, though. I mentioned in the beginning that you wanted to glue some stuff, right? So areas that I personally would glue because I think that it's essential would be this CPVCU, right? Because this holds your siphon. This, if this fails, if the siphon fails in this, this overflow is going to fail, right? So no air leaking into this is ideal. So I'm going to glue this portion of it as well as this drain half over here. I'm going to glue the end cap, the T, and the reducer. Uh, the reasoning for that is that the water is going to be below that opening of the T, right? So you're going to have constant water below that T on either end. However, this end, <laughs> this end, right here is going to be in the fish tank, so it doesn't really matter, right? However, this end, I think it's essential to make sure you don't get a mess on your floor. So, that being said, I do those por portions. Um, as far as cost goes, I marked out out, uh, most of these components are like 30 cents, a buck. Um, you get 10 foot of PC, PVC for like, I want to say it was like $3 for the CPVC and like $1.86 for the regular PVC. However, we mark it up about a foot, uh, two foot to make the thing. Um, it averaged out right around five, six dollars. So, five, six dollars a tank when you have eight tanks, nine tanks for less than fifty bucks to put overflows in all your tanks. That's a steal, right? You can't even for fifty bucks. You probably can't even get a commercial one. Um, and then the last thing I have to say, I want to thank all those guys that have excellent videos on YouTube on how to build these things. Roma Aquatics, I really enjoyed your, your video. The Inventory King, I really enjoyed that video as well. However, I had issues with the vinyl uh, tubing. I kept kinking, it seemed to restrict my flow. So I was kept searching around, kept searching around. I couldn't remember which video it was, but a guy used CPVC instead of the vinyl tubing. And to me, that just makes so much more sense. It takes up less space, right? I have a lot of space constraints because I'm a goofball and I'm apparently not good with the tape measure all the time. So I don't have a lot of clearance above my 10 gallons here on this rack or for a matter of fact these 20 highs over here. So having the minimal amount above the tank as possible was essential for me in order for this project to work. So the CPVC was a game changer for me personally. Um, but really that's all I have to say. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like this if you enjoyed this content. And leave me a comment down below. I love talking, interacting with the community. I don't have a lot of crazy fish people where I live. Um, so please hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.